Hello, this is Jack Moore, and welcome back to the Marigold Minute, a midweek short sermon, a sermonette, you might call it, and I try to keep it as short as I can, that I hope will encourage you. Now, we have been uh, doing a study at Marigold Baptist Church on uh, knowing the will of God, how to know God's will for our life. And the last message was about how to hear God's spirit speak, because that's one of the ways we know God's will. Uh, let the Holy Spirit lead us and he speaks to us. And I wanted to continue that today, but I am so burdened as I know many of you are about the resurgence of this horrible virus in our nation and really throughout the world, this COVID-19. And you know, uh, we hear a lot about people on the front lines, and, and I'm so thankful for the medical personnel on the front lines, and I am so thankful for the uh, first responders on the front lines. And yes, sometimes I'm even thankful for the politicians that are working hard and doing their best to try to uh, figure out how to handle all of this. And what about our school administrators trying to work out uh, when public school should get back into session and how to shield our students from this virus. Oh my goodness. Uh, the country is really in somewhat of a perplexing and confused state right now. Well, the question I want to ask you today, if I, excuse me, if I could entitle this uh, sermonette would be, are we as the church today on the front line? And are we as individual believers in Christ, as Christians who make up the church today, are we on the front lines during this pandemic that is going on right now? Well, I want to answer that question. And really, you'll be the only one that can answer it, and your individual church will be. Here's the answer of what it means to be on the front lines. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. Now, don't turn me off. I know you've heard sermons on this passage before. I've got it memorized. Those that are on the front lines are doing these things right now. If my people, we're not talking to the politicians right now or, or uh, to the medical people that are on the front lines, we're talking to born-again believers, Christian people. If my people who are called by my name now, this is how we get on the front lines during this pandemic or pandemic, my wife told me. Don't say pandemic, okay? Here's how we do it. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. That's the first thing. We've got to humble ourselves and pray like never before and seek my face. We need to get back to the place that seeking God's presence, loving God, walking with God is the most important thing to us in the church today and as Christians today. Some of us have left our first love, as Revelation 2 speaks of. And then the third thing, turn from their wicked ways. Now, boy, I'm preaching to myself here. Now, we won't be perfect till we get to heaven, but the Christian life ought to be a life where we progressively are seeking to become more like Christ every day, where we are consistently seeking to get victory over sin in our life. And the problem is so many churches today have lost a vision of holiness and so many individual I mean, we've gotten to the place that we have accepted certain sinful patterns in our life that we shouldn't accept because in the sight of a holy, sinless God, these aren't little things. They're wicked ways. And that's holding back revival. So if we'll humble ourselves and pray, if we will seek his face, if we will turn from our wicked ways, then church, we will be on the front lines during this COVID-19 pandemic. Because he promises this, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin. The thing that's blocking revival and God's hand really working in the midst of this situation. And I will heal their land. Boy, does our land need healing today especially when you think about disease. We need a 
healing from the great physician in heaven today. Now, you might ask the question, Jack, how in the world do you fit this in with the COVID-19 virus? Well, I fit it in because the Bible fits it in. We're so familiar with 2 Chronicles 7, 14, which I just shared with you. But have you ever read the context? Verse 13 comes before verse 14. Can I share verse 13 with you? The Lord is speaking. And here's what he says to the people of Israel. And it applies to us today because the church is a temple of God. Gathered believers and individual Christians are a temple of God. So it applies today, even though the context here was God speaking to Solomon after the temple he had built for the Lord had been dedicated. When I shut up heaven and there's no rain, he didn't say if. Sometimes God uses difficult circumstances to get us right with him, to bless us because we're going down a dead end street. I think that's where our country's headed. Oh, I wish we would pay attention to the Lord and turn back to him. But let me tell you, the Bible says judgment first begins in the house of God. It is the church that needs to be on the front lines doing what we should do. And the result will be, it will have ripple effects and it will affect everything in our nation and make an impact even in the world. Okay. When I shut up heaven, the Lord says, and there's no rain. That's pretty bad drought, or command the locusts to devour the land, that means an economical failure, because in that day, money was agriculture, and if the locusts devoured the wheat crops and the corn crops and all of this, it was uh, an economic disaster. Does that sound like something that's taking place today? Have you bought groceries lately? And then, okay, you listen to the third thing. When I send pestilence among my people. In other words, the word pestilence means a plague, a disease, a pandemic of sickness. So to speak, it means the COVID-19 virus right now. So that's the context. God says, are you living in a time? Are you living in an age where a virus is sweeping through the land? And this is among God's people too. Then get on the front line spiritually as a Christian, as a Christian church, by doing what the next verse says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. God has spoken to my heart so much about this because I don't feel like I've been on the front lines like I should be. And I don't feel like I've led my precious church at Marigold to be on the front lines like we should be. Don't claim to be a great singer. I, I'm glad I'm not because then I would struggle between preaching and singing. And believe me, uh, I'm a much better preacher, though not a great preacher, <laughs> than I am a singer. But I put a little music to uh, this passage of Scripture, Second Chronicles 13 and 14, and I hope it will help embed this upon your heart and your mind. If I shut up heaven and there is no rain, if I send locusts to devour the land, if I send disease among my people if my people were called by my name will humble themselves 
and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and I will heal their land then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin I will heal the land. Let's pray. Oh, Father, God, use this midweek devotion. Use this marigold minute to move us as Christians and as the Christian church to get on the front line to do our part, which is perhaps the thing you're waiting for, Lord, before you give us a vaccine, before you sweep our land with a healing. And we pray this in the name of Christ, who died for our sins and arose from the grave, our Savior. Amen. May the Lord bless you.